Hi right, guys. Good Lord, what a difference a day makes in the great state of Texas, where it is now 45 degrees with a 20 mile an hour, 30 mile an hour north wind blowing through. I was here three days ago. We are on the banks of the Comal River in New Braunfels, Texas. There were people swimming and inner tubing. Good Lord. And anyway, it is St. Patty's Day, guys. It is Friday, March 17th, 2023. So I got to be heading back to the biggest party on the planet here in a little while. But I think I have just enough time to do what I do every Friday. <coughs> And that is my, ec not my economic, this is my ecological meltdown around up rant. <clears throat> where we go over and check in with our friends at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com to see how the planet has been collapsing while here in Austin, Texas, we're partying like it's 1999. Hopefully the uh, meter maid will not come bust me. But anyway, <clears throat> we're going to start, uh, this might be a little bit of a shortened version, which is fine with you guys, I realize. We're going to start right where I just came from, in good old Mexico, in the Yucatan Peninsula, in Quintana Roo, Mexico, where we find deforestation on the rise as Mennonite communities move in. Mennonite families began to arrive in the southern Mexican municipality of Bacalar in 2001. You know, it was Bacalar, Mexico, where uh, I was thinking I might start spending my winters there. So, uh, Bacalar, uh, making the news... The Mennonites swiftly bought land and then founded their own ejido, an area of com communally owned agricultural land. Their presence in the region has continued to grow along with the level of deforestation, satellite imagery, and field visits reveal vast swaths of rainforest have been cleared by the Mennonites for large-scale agriculture. If there's anybody still suffering some belief that these Mennonites uh, are, are, are some sort of, I don't know, Luddite uh, back to the land, they are absolute planet-eating just, well, they're humans is what they are. They're humans. Okay, gee, imagine this. Japan, the European Union, and the UK bio biomass emissions standards <clears throat> fall short and are full of loopholes. Hmm. <coughs> A global biomass boom continues unabated with Japan, the EU, and the United Kingdom am among those governments still providing large subsidies for the burning of wood to make energy. This is called burning down the planet to save the planet. All three governments have developed greenhouse gas emission standards for biomass power plants. Yes, but forest advocates say those standards rely on multiple loopholes to avoid any real carbon savings. Those loopholes include not counting the carbon discharge from the power plant smokestacks. There you go. The biggest source of emissions in the biomass life cycle while continuing to erroneously count biomass as carbon neutral. Another loophole, oops, my computer is jumping 
around another loophole grandfathers in existing <clears throat> biomass power plants, not requiring them to meet the new greenhouse gas emission standards. And in Japan's case, asking those plants to count but not reduce their emissions. <laughs> Uh, yes, let's all burn down the planet to save the planet. I'm pretty sure that Southeast Texas is a major place that is being uh, destroyed for the biomass market. The big thicket, I think, is under assault. So we can, uh, you know, the woods that look like, like this, pretty much are being uh, chipped, you know, obliterated off the face of the planet and chipped and sent to Europe to save the planet. Okay. Um, gee, what a surprise. <clears throat> a new study supports mounting evidence that deforestation in the Amazon rainforest correlates with a reduction in regional rainfall. Experts say this new research reinforces the findings of other studies that say the Amazon is leaning towards its tipping point and the southern regions particularly are becoming drier. Yep, the tipping point is in sight for the Amazon rainforest. Oh boy. Um, let's see, okay. We have a new last chance study. Last chance. Study highlights perilous state of, quote, extinct in the wild species. You've heard this term extinct in the wild, which is pretty much synonymous with functionally extinct. A study published in the journal Science highlights that these, quote, extinct in the wild species those that cling on in captivity or as part of conservation efforts outside their natural habitat are at serious risk of disappearing entirely. <clears throat> Let's see if the uh, meter, and the meter maid seems not to be concerned about me. Uh, the researchers found that 33 animals and 39 plants have no wild population, whatever remaining, and at least 15 of these animals are down to fewer than 500 individuals. Researchers found that of the 95 species classified as extinct in the wild since 1950, 11 have gone extinct since the 1990s. The study highlights the challenges associated with maintaining genetic diversity in captivity. Sancho Panza can talk all about uh, maintaining genetic diversity in captivity. All right, what's going on in the Himalayas? Is it the Himalayas or the Himalayas? I say Himalayas. As Himalayas thaw, snow leopards scramble for habitat. Snow leopards face a severe prospect of both a shrinking range and fragmented <clears throat> populations as climate change makes their Himalayan homeland less hospitable. Yes, uh, Brian Shrestha, a leading snow leopard researcher in Nepal, where he says it's possible there may not be 
any habitable space for the big cat as temperatures rise. Yep, 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 yep. You know, it's like once the snow leopards get to the top of the mountains, uh, I think, was it on Manga Bay last week? And so now what's happening is the, I guess, the regular leopards and tigers are moving up the mountain and uh, beating the shit out of the snow leopards who are moving higher up the mountain as the glaciers shrink smaller and smaller. So uh, in a few years, I guess the snow leopards are going to be at the top of the mountain, and then I guess they can get on one of Elon Musk's rockets and just move to Mars. All right. What is going on with global ecosystems? This is a pretty broad term. Global e ecosystems are at risk of losing their carbon storage ability. Hmm. Landscapes are showing signs of losing their ability to absorb the amount of carbon they once could. A new study has revealed that would pose serious obstacles to the fight against climate change. The study reviewed the productivity of carbon storage of different ecosystems between 1981 and 2018 finding that many were at risk of turning into permanent scrubland. Researchers identified a concerning spiraling effect, meaning spiraling downward effect, in which landscapes absorb less carbon that in turn worsens climate change, which then destabilizes additional landscapes and puts them at higher risk of turning into scrubland. And then, of course, the scrubland will turn to desert. What is going on in the sub-Saharan shithole country of Namibia? Namibian community protects its rhinos from poaching, but now could lose them to mining. After years of decline, rhino poaching figures increased in Namibia in 2022, with the biggest losses occurring in Etosha National Park. But no rhinos were killed on communal land, Yet one such successful conservancy is now seeing its rhinos driven away by blasting and other activity at a copper mine that the environment minister approved. Hmm. The conservancy, the rhino conservancy, says the displacement of the resident black rhinos threatens the conservation program and revenue and is planning to sue the environment minister. Yes. Uh, imagine that, claiming the uh, Rhino Conservancy is claiming there are weaknesses. There are weaknesses in the Namibian Environmental Ministry in its exercise of environmental regulation. I cannot, I, I just refuse to believe this, guys, that the Namibian mine, environment minister is uh, turning a blind eye to blasting rhinos out of rhino preserves so they can get shot by poachers. But we're going to go from the shithole country of Namibia right here to the shithole state of Texas showing up in Manga Bay. <clears throat> in Texas, watch out for ocelots crossing roads. I did not realize we had ocelots in Texas. And it uh, doesn't sound like we are much longer. Um, 
A recent sighting of an ocelot mother and kittens crossing a South Texas road <clears throat> was both heartwarming and worrying since ocelots are rare and need more ways to cross roadways safely. Ocelots need more ways to cross Texas highways safely. There you go. Most of the documented ocelot deaths uh, have occurred on Texas roadways. Eight were killed by vehicles in less than a year, and now they think there's only 60 to 80 ocelots left in the state, so if eight per year are getting run over, such losses are unsustainable. Yes. All right, Texas has constructed 27 wildlife crossings, many in ocelot-occupied areas, but more are needed. And drivers in Texas need to slow down. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Since uh, carbon offsetting has pretty much been uh, exposed for the unadulterated horseshit that it is. We have a new carbon scheme to save the planet. How about carbon insetting? Carbon insetting as these planet eaters eye carbon insetting as a winning climate solution. Critics are wary Yes. <clears throat> a tool that wields the techniques of carbon offsets is surging among companies claiming that it reduces their carbon footprints. The tool known as carbon insetting had simmered for more than a decade on the fringes of climate action. Yes, <clears throat> but is now expanding. Okay. <coughs> Insetting is defined as company projects to reduce or remove emissions within their own internal supply chains. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> like offsets, insets can bring social and economic benefits to communities. But some oppose the tool outright, saying carbon insetting is subject to the same problems as carbon offsets, including lack of permanence and enforceable standards, but in fact can be worse than carbon offsetting as insetting can lead to double counting climate benefits and can have weaker oversight. <clears throat> Having now become popular with major global corporations such as Nestle and PepsiCo, insetting as a climate tool yes, needs to see increased scrutiny. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Would you believe that in sub-Saharan Africa that environmental impact assessments need a shakeup? Huh. Environmental and social impact assessments as they are now implemented in development projects across Africa need a, quote, shake-up hmm, to ensure that, you know, that they're doing what they claim they're doing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, 
Georgine Kingi from one of these NGOs over there in Africa uh, says the ideal uh, you know, environmental review process would be one in which, quote, the government and the mining companies are not just colluding to make profits. Huh. Morgan Hafflich, a professor of nature conservation in Namibia, you know, where those copper mines are blowing up rhinos, says the fundamental problem with these environmental reviews in Africa and other is that they, the, you know, the assessments and other environmental safeguards can simply be ignored, huh, with little consequence other than fines that the corporations just budget for anyway. Yes, there you go. All right, well, I guess uh, the noble savages in Colombia and Ecuador can sleep more soundly tonight as Colombia and Ecuador announce an alert system to protect indigenous from armed groups, Colombia and Ecuador implementing a system designed to alert about risks of violence against residents who live near the border, many of whom are Awa indigenous people. Since last August, and this is like in the last six months, thousands of Awa have been forcibly displaced or suffered threats, intimidation, torture, or forced recruitment by organized crime groups participating in drug trafficking and illegal mining. Many of the Awa live in extremely biodiverse areas that serve as corridors to other parts of the Amazon, but they have struggled to protect their ancestral lands. All right. <clears throat> Did you realize there are 10 billion trees, I guess, in uh, roughly what we call the Sahel? Uh, that there's more trees there than, you know, bef between the rainforest to the south and the Amazon, in the Sahara Desert to the north, uh, scientists have mapped nearly <clears throat> 10 billion trees um, storing carbon. Um, we will see uh, how long those 10 billion trees last. Uh, We've mentioned this before about, you know, this over in Indonesia. I guess it's official now where they have pretty much just uh, <coughs> rolled out the red carpet to uh, f foreign investors in these giant industrial <coughs> fishing boats. Now we're going to wind this up. We have a new term for the collapse of a planet. For the glossary of the collapse, plasticosis. Plasticosis. The new disease killing seabirds and likely many other species. Scientists have identified a new fibrotic disease that they call plasticosis and flesh-footed shearwaters, a species that inadvertently consumes plastic. They found that plasticosis was present even in shearwaters with only a small quantity of plastic in their stomachs. While 
this plastic related disease has so far only been identified in shear waters. Experts say that nearly every organism, including humans, is being impacted by plastic in some way. Yep, yep, yep. I do not see a Manga Bay reporting on uh, these new plastic rocks that I was talking about and I was talking with Elliot Jacobson a couple of days ago how uh, the Anthropocene is 100% official as these uh, mostly these uh, abandoned fishing nets are starting, you know, that get all ground up and mixed up with the, the beaches that they land on. They're actually turning into a new identified species of plastic rock. What was the term? So we have plasticosis, a new disease, and I forgot the name of these new rocks. The, the first rock that has been created by, you know, inadvertently created by humans. Pla anyway, welcome to the Anthropocene. But anyway, I have got to uh, start thinking about getting to the biggest party on planet Earth while I still can. My guys.